Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Smith. Gina Quattrochi is off today. Thanks for joining us. New amended complaints that were filed against Tippecanoe Waste Removal now list more than 750 affected customers. Indiana Attorney General Greg Zeller filed the amended complaints today. They say owners Curtis and Melissa Knable misled and deceived customers and used corporate money for personal expenses, including groceries and video games. The Knables have not yet responded to the Attorney General's complaints. And Attorney General Greg Zeller joins us now to discuss those complaints and the case against Tippecanoe Waste Removal. Thanks for being with us again, sure. Mr. Attorney here. General. Thanks for coming in. Um, the changes that you made today specifically list the owners, right? That's, That's one right. big change, and you added some 300, uh, 350 customers. Probably the most important part is the amended complaint now pierces the corporate veil and says that the owners actually used monies right out of the corporation. So we're going to ask that the courts allow us to go after their personal assets as well as any corporate assets. You indicated in the complaint that they kind of commingled corporate and personal money. How did you know that this money wound up using, being used for groceries, for instance, or children's clothing? Well, we have investigators, plus we've done our own work with the bank records of the corporation. So uh, since we filed the original complaint, uh, we've gotten those records, we've gone through them, and the argument that we make uh, in this amended complaint is that they used it as their personal money, therefore we're asking the court to allow us to go after them personally. Uh, you also indicated that there was some effort at deception here because they put on their website that the, uh, the, the customer accounts had been turned over to waste, uh, waste management. There's, there's a, an effort to um, let people think that they're going to be covered by a new um, uh, vendor in the future, uh, which really left people uh, without an opportunity to, to find somebody quickly. Uh, so I think that is the deceptive sales that we're talking about. Now, this is filed in civil. This is a civil case. It is. Why not a criminal case? Well, those are things that would go to the prosecutor. Uh, frankly, it takes a lot longer to work up a, a prosecution because the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Here, we have to show by a preponderance of the evidence. We think we have that. Um, and so the, the end game for you would be what? To get restitution for the um, 100, 700 plus people, maybe more. Okay. Now, on Friday, four same-sex couples filed lawsuit against the state of Indiana, which you are now going to be defending. Um, and I guess that's an attack sort of on two fronts. Uh, explain that's right. that. There's uh, four couples. Two have licenses in other states. Uh, they ask Indiana to recognize those licenses, which currently our statute doesn't allow. And then two couples who would like licenses from the state of Indiana. So it really challenges the constitutionality of both those parts of Indiana's statute. The U.S. Attorney General uh, Eric Holder advised state's attorney general a couple weeks ago that they did not have to defend their states against these sorts of lawsuits. Why are you then defending it? You know, I, um, I reject the U.S. Attorney's um, idea that as lawyers, we have an obligation to defend our clients. He may take a different view, but I think it's really the role of the courts to determine whether something's constitutional, not the lawyer who's pledged to defend the state statutes. The men and women in our legislature who have the authority and make these decisions, uh, it's my role to defend their actions uh, for better or worse. So I'm, I'm not here to uh, argue my views, but the men and women who serve us in the legislature. I thought it was kind of interesting, the, the statement that your office put out uh, on Friday indicated that you will be uh, vigorously defending the state mm -hmm. in this case and on appeal. Does that indicate that you think that you're going to lose the initial case? Uh, either way, someone will lose and someone will appeal. The, this is one of the great questions of our day, whether this is a federal constitutional right. Uh, it would have gone to the Supreme Court and been resolved last year, except the Attorney General in California failed to defend. Therefore, the court said that there was no standing of the parties uh, and sent it back. So I think the obligation of attorneys general all around the country to defend the statutes, leave it for the courts to determine uh, once and for all whether it's constitutional or not. Okay. Indiana Attorney General Greg Zeller, thanks so much. Sure. Pleasure to see you again. again.